was hanging around with the wrong sort of like people. I was fascinated with um, bad guys. I think if I would have stuck hanging around with them people, I might not have been here today. He's always in a fight. He used to fight the teachers, his friends. He used to fight everybody. My mum warned me, if I don't bear myself and pull my socks up, I will be sent to a ball stall. I got expelled from my primary school and I got cast away to Sussex. They taught me a lot of discipline, focus and manners. I didn't have the education to be a lawyer, a solicitor. That's where I decided I wanted to be a boxer. This guy is an awesome puncher. I don't think the men in the street have any idea how powerful he is. Just a touch could floor your eye or anybody else that's around. Have you ever wonder why you can hit people so hard? You seem to have a gift for it. If you want something in life and you want to be something in life, you just work and go for it, as they say in America. Just go for it. We won't let them know my story. They got their gold, they go in. My mama said, we're gonna be a champion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm about to be a heavyweight champion of the world. I've been an underdog for a long, long, long time. Can Frank Bruno become our first heavyweight champion this century? Dreams do come true, let's remember that. See my way. The heavyweight champion of the world is the pinnacle, it's the number one spot in sport. It's a rocky road, the boxing game. He's got a family that adore him. He's our Frank. I had a family and I had bread to put on the table. I had it all worked out. You know, I could make it as much money as I could to boxing. I would have reigned supreme if it weren't for Iron Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson! Mike Tyson is frightening. He's an animal. He just loves to hurt people. Psychologically, mentally, and physically. I feel I was born to fight. Oh, fuck you, man. Don't fight more. They want my title, but they're not getting it. Frank has got the support that Mike Tyson will never have because people truly love him. You know what you to go, Daddy? Oh, no, race, 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 race. I have a friend who's, who's a judge, and when he gets a person like he did this particular one who came, the, the judge felt that in this boy there was some good, something worth saving there. Gravy on there already? Mike Tyson, he had a tough upbringing. He had been arrested 38 times by the age of 13. And when legendary trainer Customato met him, he had no parents and no home. So he adopted him as his son. He said, I always like boxing. I said, if he's into boxing, I can tell you now I can do something with him. All right, Camille, you're going to be seated? Yes, I am. Be seated. All right. <laughs> if he wants to be the fighter, he says he wants to be. He has to subject himself to those rules and the framework of this house and the demands of the gymnasium. Oh, you better? How much? You got enough? Guy went to the restaurant, right? He took off a very expensive coat and hung it up. And on the coat, he put a little card. And on it, said, this coat belongs to the heavyweight champion of the world. Come back, the coat is gone. There's a little card, another card. <laughs> this coat was stolen by the, the fastest runner in the world. Wow. Come and get me. <laughs> <laughs> is that for real? I was just very ambitious, and I, 
I wanted people to know my name. I was just fed that. I was fed that every day from my trainer. You're the best ever. People are going to know your name. The world's going to know you. People are going to name their children after you. And I was worried. I didn't want to disappoint them and make them look stupid. So you don't throw them up from there. You throw from there more. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's it. Now you can throw it. See? See? My job is to take the spark and fan it. That's it. See? Ain't no way he's going to hit you that. Right? When it starts to become a little flame, I feed it. And I feed the fire until it becomes a roaring blaze. All right, we'll do the uppercuts another time. By 20, he was the world's youngest ever heavyweight champion. One with the left. I wanted to make my mentor look correct, and that was my main objective. I wanted to make him happy to have the youngest heavyweight champ. That's good enough. All right. And as my first guest, who certainly knows how to survive, it's the people who are on the receiving end of one of his punches that have the problems. Will you please welcome the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, Mike Tyson. <laughs> kind of trust that you've brought out. No. <laughs> What's that? These are my championship belts. That's the WBC one. Yes. Yeah, look at that. Fantastic. They're terrific. Now, you, you saw Frank Bruno today. Yes. Is he in good shape? He looks in great shape. Does he? <laughs> you sparred with Bruno? Yeah. Was this when you were an up-and-coming fighter and he was there? We were both young. Yeah. He was like 20, I was like 15 when we first started. Frank Bruno has always said that boxing really saved him from a life of crime. Would that be true of you? Because it has been said that you you were a pretty rough diamond when you were young. You know, I, I came from a very wild and active neighborhood when I was a young kid, but it's really difficult for me to believe that Frank Bruno saved from a life of crime. Now, he always said that... Meeting it... the guy and talking with the guy, yeah. I can't picture him being a fighter. He's so docile, such a sweet guy. You want to give him a hug and give him a kiss? So sweet. Iron Mike has come a long way since the days on the Brooklyn streets of unarmed robberies and muggings and housebreakings. There was a tremendous excitement about the possibility of Bruno and Tyson fighting. And Frank, with his big laugh, the guy that trained above the Royal Oak pub, wanted to disprove the doubts that people had. George has said he's going to turn you into an animal. Now, you've yeah. always been the most lovable right. pussy cat. Um, if I'd be an animal, Jimmy. Will you? Yeah. In, in what way? In a lot of ways, you know, because it's just so important to me. The 80s were boring until Frank Bruno came along. He changed how people looked at the sport. Every time he fought on TV, the public would go wild about it. Frank Bruno's unthreatening nature was the, the secret to his success. You know, as long as I keep my feet on the ground and don't, you know, start being a playboy, and everything like that. I should build that all the time. In Britain, Bruno came to represent the acceptable face of black masculinity. His parents came from the West Indies. They were among the first immigrants to settle in this part of the world. And then he became, well, as company, a state and kidney pie. You took a bit of stick from some of the critics, didn't you, at the beginning? And now I notice they're all coming around and saying that you're really good at it. And I mean, I'm just a ducker and diver just trying to make a living, you know, so... Right? Yeah. <laughs> Frank cared about other things. He cared about what other people wanted. He cared about what people thought about him. That could have been a weakness. 
Tyson, on the other hand, was untamed. He was feared. The media loved to hate Tyson. And just here, Mike. Mike. We all think now of a fight of you against Bruno. Is that something you're looking forward to? Uh, we're looking forward to the possibility of fighting Bruno. A lot will depend on how Bruno does against Tillis. The crowd and Bruno know that he has to do a really good job tonight. If he does, it could put him on the path to the World Heavyweight title. And the man who holds the World Heavyweight title, I'm delighted to say, is sitting right beside me and he's going to help me with the commentary tonight, Mike Tyson. Welcome to Wembley, Mike. Thank you very much, Harry. My dream is to win the Heavyweight Championship with the world. I've got my chance. I'm going to let it pass me, you know? Bruno's entire career at stake here. Frank never was great with speed, but he had a right hand like, you know, it was probably like getting hit in the face of a tree trunk. There's the big Bruno right. That's the one he's been saving. Good uppercut from Bruno. Tillis is badly hurt and he doesn't want to fight on and the referee stopped it anyway. Maybe one of these days, Mike, you may be in there with him. I commend you. You came out very well, and I'm very impressed. Very kind. And I look forward to meeting you in the future. Yeah, I look forward to meeting you as well. Thank you very Thanks, much. Mike. I think yeah. you're a great man. Thank you. Same to you, Mike. Mike Tyson has signed to fight Frank Bruno in London. The richest fight in British boxing history. Frank Bruno is hoping to beat the American Tyson and so become the first Briton this century crowned as the heavyweight boxing champion of the world. Do you really believe you can win this fight? You know, I mean, there's no man unbeatable at all. And there's only one God. Boxing is a business. Mike Tyson and Frank Bruno were going to be the biggest fight ever in this country. 90,000 people, and Frank had the opportunity to make more money than ever before. Frank, face this way slightly, Frank. Just as it would face this way. He was going to get a million quid. That's it. <laughs> Some people would say you're just doing it for the money. The money does help pay the light bills and then put petrol in the car. He's supposed to be something of a tiger in the ring, isn't he? It's isn't he? Frank, like... He's demolished, he's demolished yeah. some pretty pretty hard men, hasn't he? Right, it's people like you are making him sound like he's one, I'm one stone heavier than him and he's fighting in my country, so I'm happy. But Frank sadly did not get his dream. Tyson's car skidded off a wet road and slammed into a tree, knocking the fighter unconscious. He was taken to a local hospital and then transferred to one in New York City. Uh, you okay? All you the okay? while, his wife okay, tried to keep the media away. In an interview with ABC Television this evening, Gibbons had called her marriage to Tyson pure hell, describing the heavyweight champion as a manic depressive who terrorized her. It was humiliating. Tyson's demons were being laid bare on national TV, and he just sat there and said nothing. I went from one corner of the wall, bounced off that corner of the wall to another corner, and then I was out. October's world heavyweight fight between Mike Tyson and Frank Bruno is off. Tyson suffered head injuries in a car crash at the weekend. He will fight Bruno eventually, but it's not known when. It's sad, you know, because I've done a solid four months training for this fight. You know, I've been away from home for four months, and it's been hard taking it, to be quite honest, because I put in a lot of work, a lot, a lot of work. You hear all crazy questions about people saying you shouldn't go in the same ring as him. He's busted his hand, he's done his ribbing, he's done his braiding, and he's confused at the moment. So wouldn't you think I should stand a much more better chance? I think being wrapped up in the whole Mike Tyson story only propelled Frank further into the limelight. In 1989 in Britain, Really, no other sportsman had anything like his profile. But he was in limbo. 
And the only way he was going to get to the title was to go and meet Tyson in person and try to beg him to confirm a fight date. British boxer Frank Bruno has set off to Los Angeles to meet the man he wants to fight for the world heavyweight title, which has been postponed five times since last June. By December, the fight had been delayed and delayed and delayed. And I think Frank felt like the opportunity was slipping away from him. Do you think there was any deliberate attempt to try and unsettle you? Well, uh, it might have been to try and unsettle me, but I've been training nearly every day. I'm a little bit old now, and I'm a man. I can stand up to all them sort of things. I'm very, very confident it's going to be on this time. I'm not going there for the suntan. What will you be saying to Mr Tyson when you get I'm there? I'm not too sure. All I want to know is that he's going to be in the opposite corner. The plan worked. Frank finally got his fight and a bigger payday for his trouble. But there was a catch. Now, £2 million is the purse. Presumably that's because the venue's changed. It won't take place in Britain, but Las Vegas. Does that bother you? It does bother me a little bit because um, my true fans, you know what I mean, sort of like wanted to see the fight. The fight was made in England and it's a little bit disappointed. The sun's coming up, Yeah. He hated being away from home. He was very homesick. You bring the family over, your mum come over? Uh, my mum's coming over for the fight. Um, my lady's coming over, my brother and sisters are coming over, and yeah. there's 2,000 people from England. 2,000 people from England? 2,000 And they're all over. staying at your place? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> does your mum, does she sit right up in front? And... No, she's just coming to Vegas, just to come to Vegas. She don't, she's an evangelist, so she doesn't really like boxing. So right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I couldn't think of a better place Crazy. for evangelists than Vegas. <laughs> I've never been there before, and I think he, he chooses that I should be there this time. And I mean, you have got to bend over backwards at time to please everybody, especially in your family. And I'm doing just that. I miss home, and I miss England, but it's a job what I've got to do. You think it would help if you could have the children or see the children? It's life, so I, I moved away after Christmas from seeing them. I miss them, I speak to them nearly every single day. And I love them, you know. Would you speak to them now? Or if because where, I, have where to, are they? I have them here. You'll be able to see them. You're joking. Here they come. That's Rachel and Nicola. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh, hang on. Hang on. I love you as well, darling. You'd be good for mummy. Thank you. Thank If there was one guy to beat Mike Tyson, it was Frank Bruno, because he had the stature, the strength, and the power. It's all about the will to win. This was a great moment of opportunity for Frank because Mike Tyson seemed to have completely lost his way. So, how's the training going? Because uh, Bruno is kind of hoping you're not going to be fit enough. I mean, what's the word on that? Great shape. Are you feeling shape. in great shape? Well, not great shape, but I'm in good enough shape to fight. <laughs> <laughs> the guy had a, a car crash. He damaged his hand. His mind is not on the game. His mind not, not conditioned for this fight. And I was confident before all this happened. I think this is a pr prime time to beat a Mike Tyson. If Bruno can find the punch of his life, then he believes he can fulfill what he says is his destiny, the heavyweight championship of the world. Don King is trying to make Mike Tyson out to be Superman. But I got kryptonite to beat him. Thank you very much. <laughs> Win or lose, White Britain had embraced Bruno. Now, Eddie and Bruno give a preview of what you can expect in the ring Saturday. A new heavyweight champion. Oh. 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 Oh.
Anybody who hits like Frank has got a chance with anybody in the world because you only have to hit somebody once in the right place at the right time and you've won. It's a story of hard work versus war talent. Bruno lived by the rules. He lived to serve his country. Frank Bruno weighs in at 228 pounds. Tyson, on the other hand, was framed by the US media as a dangerous deviant. Mike Tyson weighs in at an even 218 pounds. Two men with so much in common were loved and hated in equal measure. Welcome to Ringside in Las Vegas. Everybody's had an opinion about what would happen when Frank Bruno entered the ring against Mike Tyson. Well, we're about to see. Bruno is on his way to the ring. The most important night of his life. A momentous occasion in the history of British boxing. And there comes the gladiator. Iron Mike Tyson makes his way to the ring. Can Bruno pull off the greatest British win of this century? Are you ready, Harry? I'm ready, Des. Is Frank. This is the main event of the evening for the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. In the blue corner, the challenger, Frank Bruno. And in the red corner, the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, Iron Mike Tyson. is the moment of truth. In round one, Tyson's got the ball. He just charges at Bruno. And there goes Bruno! Bruno's hurt and he's out by in the first few seconds. It's disaster time. It caught Bruno, he was wobbled, and then another right hand kind of up over the shoulder, got him off balance. That must have been a dreadful blow to his morale. I think Tyson thought and this was going to be one way. It was going to be easy cake. But Frank was fighting to win. Get in there, Frank. But fighting back in his hand tight. He knows he can hurt him now. One strike gets him with a good right. And a left hook and that one with Tyson. Tyson gets nailed with a left one. Tyson looks wobbly. I couldn't quite believe what I was seeing. And nobody has hurt Mike Tyson before, but Bruno did. I'm out of my seat. I'm actually out of my seat because you just think he could actually win. Bruno's thumping out punches. Tyson trying to fight back. That's the first time I've seen Tyson staggered. A bell ends, round number one, and the crowd loves it. So Bruno went down, but not hurt. And Bruno tagged Tyson and did hurt him. It must have been a fantastic feeling to go back to the corner for Frank. The first round had gone much better than anybody had really hoped. Nobody likes to get hit in the head by anybody. Much less a big, strong guy like Bruno. And I'm sure that from a mental standpoint, Tyson's expectations were turned it'll be interesting to see if he's like a wild man in round two Frank had some other good moments in rounds two and three good left hook from Bruno again but Tyson started to take control back and he went up a gear immediately Tyson is punishing Frank Bruno right now. Clubbing right hand hurt Bruno. Bruno again lets Tyson come in and again he hangs on. Frank was taking more and more punishment. That was when he's going to hang on. And in the fifth round, the end was inevitable. Tyson trying to attack now to finish him off. Lance a big right hand. Bruno's in big trouble now. He's ready to go. 
but Bruno was too brave for his own good. He wouldn't go down again. Still in big trouble. The uppercut catches him. The right hand catches him. He's put up admirable resistance, but I think it's going. He can't stop the man coming to him. His mouth is bleeding. His nose is bleeding. Tyson knows he's got him in big trouble. Richard Steele has moved in and has stopped the fight. Bruno's brave challenge has come to an end. Michael Tyson wins on a fifth round. TKO. You did us proud. You did us proud. Weren't intimidated at all, Frank? But one little bit. Thanks, intimidated sir. by you. Good luck. Frank left the ring, but there's no way he's a loser because he has got the support that Mike Tyson will never have because people don't truly love him and they love Frank. If Tyson walked out that ring the loser, he'd have nobody because he hasn't got what Frank's got. But Frank's got a family that adore him. And he's never a loser to us. Because he's ours. He's our Frank. I haven't seen my kids for nearly two months, so I, that's the first thing I want to see. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Cheers. Thank you, Thank you very, very much. Oh, welcome. Rich, come on. Easy, easy, Rory. Easy, easy, easy. Right, he fought his composure. Did he ever hurt you, Mike? Well, he was throwing hard punches. I got hit with some hard punches, but I refused to be hurt. Thanks, Mike. Tyson regarded himself as being invincible, and there was no reason to doubt his invincibility at that time. We were all blown away by the performance of Tyson. On that night, Bruno had probably faced the best Mike Tyson ever. I knew that he was going to be tough because I knew that he read the papers and he was so psyched out and as he said, this is a peak time to beat Mike Tyson and, <laughs> and I knew and I knew he had that in his mind I knew he was serious to fight You would have thought that this would have ended Frank's moment in the limelight but I think it was the manner in which he lost that made the public love him even more it's so difficult, you know, like I was um, went in there 100% confident I got knocked down so that messed up my confidence, my balance and everything. But I'm not making no excuses. Mike Tyson's a good fighter and I can't take nothing away from him. He was almost like lifted aloft and carried on people's shoulders throughout the whole nation. Everybody was like patting Frank Bruno on the back. That's really not what he wanted. He wanted a heavyweight championship of the world. He'd spent 15 years of his life working toward producing a performance that would give him a victory. I thought he was fantastic what he'd done. So long as Mike Tyson was at the helm, he was always going to have an impossible task of fulfilling his ultimate dream. The problem really for Tyson was, as good as he performed against Bruno, there was this sense of impending chaos all around him. Anyone growing up the way Mike Tyson grew up would have a deeply flawed personality. He grew up on the streets fighting for his life. When his mentor, Customato, died, Tyson had nobody to keep him under control. He needed a father. The time he only had, he gave him how to fight, that's about all, but actually, how to live, he didn't have enough time. The Vernonville Police Department received a call 
indicating a disturbance was in progress at the Tyson residence. Robin Givens fled to California from her husband, the heavyweight champion Mike Tyson. And today, Marvin Mitchelson filed for a Givens divorce from Tyson. After Mike and Robin Givens broke up, emotionally, he was destroyed. That's what enabled Don King to take over. Anything, just call on me. I got mucho dinero, no mucho, problem. Mucho. <laughs> He's one of the great con artists of all time. I'm telling you, you better talk to me because I don't like what's going down here. I paid fighters more money than anyone in the history of the sport. Only thing I could be guilty of is hitting them in the head with $100 bills. Don's motive was to put Mike back in a street punk mentality because Mike's attorneys were Don's attorneys. Turbulent Tyson slipped away from training for an unannounced trip to Vancouver to visit his estranged wife, Robin Givens. While there, he'd assaulted a TV crew. It all added to the speculation that he may be in no fit emotional state. They care about Mike. They care about money. The undoing of Tyson had started already. The reckless behavior, the chaos, it was allowed more. I had a arsonist in your midst. Problem with King was he'd give him matches. I had been shipwrecked on this island now for three long years. I was becoming weary of the same old food. Then one day I came across a wooden case. Inside I found a curry sauce, a chili sauce, and spicy tomato, all from HP. My food was now much improved. I wish I could say the same for Friday. You still can't get my name right. Pass the sauce, Harry. Add variety to life with the new sauces from HP. I think any fighter in Frank's situation at that time did need a period away from boxing. Commercially, Frank was a hotter proposition than ever before, and he did take the opportunity to maximize that. This is 1989. The days of just having a guy as a boxer was one thing. If you've got a guy with a personality like Frank, then uh, there's obviously lots of opportunities in, in television, advertising, sponsorship, that sort of thing. He could even go on to have a long future as a TV personality. What is your requirements, Michael? Why do you think that is? I think it's because he's just such a nice guy. And it doesn't matter if he's a loser. Exactly. Do you, do you think you are more an entertainer than a fighter? I'm just a duck and divey, you know, I do a little bit of entertaining, a little bit of boxing. You, know? you would find Mike Tyson doing that, would you? But that's my sweetie money, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you say <So>. please. <laughs> and go, and in. Bow. 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 Yeah, that's the sort of thing. Yeah, I understand. When you do pantomime, it doesn't do your boxing any favours. You know, the two don't really mix. How are you doing your first acting role? It's um, a different experience, for Fiona, you know, it's pretty nice, very different, unusual. A bit different from boxing, though. Yeah, totally different. And I'm delighted to say he's joining us live from Las Vegas right now, the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, Iron Mike Tyson. Mike, in honour of your position as the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, and for maintaining your unbeaten record in 1989, I'm very happy indeed to present you with the BBC's Overseas Sports Personality of the Year Award. Congratulations, Mike. Well, alongside me is the man that uh, I suppose you dealt with back in February, Frank Bruno. You got anything to say here to Frank? How you doing, Frank? You hear you singing <laughs> nowadays. <laughs> yeah. Give us a little verse. Let's hear what you're going to sing. No, no, yeah, you got me on the, on the spot, you know, I can't sing. Of course, we don't really know, Frank, whether there's any prospect of you two getting together again. I was just going to ask him if he's still on, you know? Yes. But you just let him go. Well, you're of course, for the moment, friends. you're otherwise engaged, aren't you? Do you mind if we have a little look at your most recent performance, Frank? I 
think there were moments that you probably would probably go back to the hotel room afterwards and think, oh God, I'm not doing my career anymore. He didn't have a purpose. He never got that buzz that he got from boxing. Hello, beautiful. Good luck, darling. I'm not only acting. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Frank Bruno was a great sport. I knew something wasn't right. He was down, he wasn't happy. In 1990, I got a call and said I was next in line to challenge Tyson. He was still undefeated, but leading up to that fight, he was all over the place. The rumors were in a party and all night. Still in great shape and there's no way I could lose. In terms of sports psychology and so on, do you have a, no. a method? None at all. It's fight. Nothing's better. You can have a psychiatrist, you can have whatever. A hypno you, you can't fight. You, you, you f Tyson was going to be defeated sooner or later. But everybody thought I had nothing to offer. Only ones that believed that it could be possible for me to beat him was my brother and my father and myself. Douglas looks pretty dangerous with that right. Tyson is having his problems. Oh, and Douglas there really looking to explode the right hand. But look at that right uppercut. Then the left hand. Tyson is down. Tyson is down for the first time in his career. And the Once Tyson I dropped him, I thought he was going to get up. We never thought we'd see this. You may be watching the biggest sensation in heavyweight history. It is all over. The title has gone from Mike Tyson. Tyson didn't really take Buster Douglas too serious. And when you don't, you know, history happens. Buster Douglas is the new heavyweight champion of the world. Going into that fight, he was indestructible. But after the fight, I don't think he was ever the same individual. You can't control yourself outside the ring. It's going to show up inside the ring. What do you think went wrong? I, I mean, that's, I wasn't right. I mean, I just took it for granted. Took my, 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 my body for granted. Took my skills for granted. I mean, just leave the girls alone. Leave late nights alone. Just concentrate on what you're doing. The King is dead. Mike Tyson's reign as heavyweight champion is over. Frank Bruno, does that make it any easier for you to make a decision to come back? The way people were talking about Tyson as if he was King Kong. I'm not running down Tyson now as he got beaten or anything, but no one's King Kong. Nobody's un invincible. I've got the hat on. It's been quite a year for you. You've been in Panto, you've yeah, got been married, you've got a medal. In. Yeah, I'm here talking to you, press guys. It's been quite an exciting year for me, yeah. So many commentators enjoyed the demise of Mike Tyson. But in semi-retirement, Frank was still a hero. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Pump up the jam, pump it up, while your feet are stumping. And the jam is pumping, look at here, the crowd is jumping. Frank was a very wealthy man. He was able to hire helicopters, flying celebrities for his children's birthday parties. But it didn't matter how things went in his personal life, Frank wanted that title. It's like um, being married, yeah, and your wife running away from you, and you love her and she just won't come back, you know, it's always in your heart. Any normal person would have taken that loss and learned a real lesson from it, but not Mike Tyson. His attitude was still one of, I can take whatever I want, I can do whatever I want, and nobody's going to stop me. Mike Tyson was only in town for 24 hours, but in those 24 hours, he blew in like a tornado. 
he was by himself, so he decided to just go ahead and show up at Miss Black America. Oh, I'm in a dream day after day. Mm. Beautiful women, such an array. What can I say? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Yeah, definitely. That sounds better. <laughs> I'm only playing. Well, let's go. It turned out to be the worst mistake of Mike Tyson's life. He put his arm around me, and I thought it was going to my waist, but it went to my rear end, and he rubbed it and squeezed or whatever. I'm doing some low moves here. As you notice, I'm going in and out, laterals, you know, horizontal, <laughs> working it over. <laughs> He was clearly out of control. He almost had kind of a roving hunter look to him. Mm -mm, you look good, 14. I forgot how good you look. Shit. He had all of these women clearly enamored with him, including Desiree Washington. Thank you, Desiree. Hello, my name is Desiree. He was obviously taken with her. She was a very pretty girl, and Desiree was thrilled. And he took advantage of that. Because I love a man who loves to debate. Do you have a problem? Do you know something I'm going to report a rape? Special grand jury returned a four count indictment charging Michael Tyson with one count of rape, two counts of criminal deviant conduct, and one count of criminal confinement. Desiree Washington knows what happened in the room. I know what happened, and I know I'm innocent. It's a terrible moment for Mike Tyson. All it does for the rest is open up opportunity. Frank Bruno is tonight waiting for the verdict of the British Boxing Board of Control on whether he'll be allowed to fight again. Frank had evidence of a significant eye injury related to his fight with Mike Tyson two years earlier. So I advised Frank that they should seriously consider retiring. It looked like Tyson might be going away for a long time, and Bruno desperately wanted a comeback. The doctors said it was way too dangerous, but Frank just refused to give up on it. I've just got to wait until I have operation. This one, I can give you more information. I've got a torn retina. That's all I can do. Do you know when that will be? I'm not too sure yet, Miss Thames. You don't know? No. <laughs> <laughs> do you fear for the future? For your future? Um, you've got to, you know what I mean, take that into consideration. But i just got to wait and see, you know? Unfortunately, like every other boxer I've dealt with, he chooses to um, uh, ignore my warnings in that respect. We're all crazy in this world, you know what I mean? I'm crazy for wanting to come back, but it's in my blood, and I would like to get it out once and for all. This is where the comeback begins, after almost three years out of the ring. Bruno's retina was severely damaged, and he should have retired. But that was just not going to stop him. One has to say he returns to the ring amid deep public concern for his well-being. Frank knew the risks. He knew that things could go horribly wrong, but it was a part of the challenge that he accepted. The left hand, and I think that will put everything beyond any possible doubt. It's official. Frank is back. And the main news again. In America, the boxer Mike Tyson has been found guilty of raping a beauty pageant contestant. The judge sentenced Tyson to six years in jail and four years of psychotherapy after that. I followed the Tyson case. I was a big boxing fan. And when he was convicted, I was not surprised. Tyson's fall from grace is now complete, from heavyweight champion to convicted felon. His boxing career is over. Then I got a call from Don King. And he said, Mike Tyson would like to meet you and consider hiring you to be his appellate lawyer. And so I flew to uh, Indianapolis on the night before he was to be sentenced. I meet Don King and he takes me up to Mike Tyson's suite. This is Mike Tyson's last night of liberty for 
a long time and he's with his entourage and they're having a couple of beers and Mike says, oh, you're Dershowitz the lawyer. I said, yeah, yeah. Well, let me ask you some questions. Do you believe I'm innocent? I said, Mike, I have to be very honest with you. From what I know about the case, you are an absolute schmuck. He looks at me. I thought he was going to hit me. He said, why are you calling me a schmuck? I said, because you went up to a hotel room alone without witnesses, with a woman who you had just met, and you put yourself in a position where you could be extorted, framed. You're a schmuck for doing that. He looks at me, and growls. Then he looks to his retainers, Don King. He said, that guy called me a schmuck. He's right. That was your job to stop me from going up to that room. Alan, you're hired. Mike Tyson was guilty of the crime of stupidity. Tyson might have been out of the way, but Frank still faced a huge uphill struggle. He may be the wrong side of 30, but Bruno's confidence, at least, remains in peak condition. I'm 31 and I feel the best I've ever felt in my life, you know. I'm matured, I've got more hairs on my chest, look at that. You know what I mean? I feel stronger than I did when I was 28, 25. The age was starting to creep up, certainly, but Frank was still in such amazing condition. He had to start to work his way up from the bottom, but all the time he was thinking, I can still climb the mountain. From Miami in the United States of America, Jose Rivalta. That's a good right hand, and down goes Rivalta. The big punch of Bruno has absolutely rendered him unconscious. From South Africa, here yeah, Bruno's right hand suddenly came through. Towel has come in from the South Africa corner. It's all over. Around. Frank Bruno was on a mission. The flame that was burning inside of him to be the weight champion of the world was still burning brightly. Oh, it's all over. Every fight is a step closer, you know what I mean? Because if you lose, there's no more stepping, you just got to step backwards. This man is going to go and win the world title for Bruno. It's supposed to produce a citizen who comes out better than when he went in. Will it do that? I, not my opinion. My opinion only that I base, it, it doesn't rehabilitate you more, so debilitate you. Because I De find myself doing things that I never dreamed I'd be capable of doing. Like? Saying things I never think I'd be capable of saying. Does this have any bearing on your fighting again? I'm the best in what I do. I'm just the total best. The other guys out there that are great, they're great fighters, but they could do anything else. This is all I want to do. Mike Tyson, more than any other athlete in modern memory, was the most spectacular rise and fall that we've seen. With the leg out. Bruno, he was still our Frank. loved by the wider white society, but he was viewed with some suspicion by the black community because he was seen to be a comic pantomime character. Not for the pantomime, this is real. Not for the pantomime, this is real. My fans were out there, man. Yeah? Where's your skirt today? My skirt is at home, mate. Oh, good. Yes, well. good. <laughs> Many black Britons thought that Bruno had sold out He'd sold out his race, his black identity, in order to appease white audiences. You're a living embarrassment. I am a thespian, so don't mess with that. Well, at least, well, at least, at least I'm not a sellout as well. I think the only time he got really upset was fighting me. I remember calling Frank a coconut. And he got basically the, 
one of the best lawyers in London to serve me a writ. Other boxers would kind of play on this, that Bruno was a bit of an Uncle Tom, that he doesn't love his people. And it's clear that that really, really hurt Bruno. If you think I'm scared, just move out the way and I would knock them out right here. Yeah. Love you to come and try, brother. <laughs> I'm definitely not your brother, you yeah. Uncle Tom. <laughs> You're trying to fit in. You don't even respect your own people where you at here. It's not nice, you know, I mean, the things what he's been saying. To be coming out with that crap, you know what I mean? That is really serious, serious stuff what he's coming out with there, you know? And I don't want to be associated with people like that, to be quite honest. Eve. You've got to get the phone. Yeah, you know, the boots on. You don't look for you to go. 1995. I had a family to provide for. We could do it, Rach. Yeah. Yeah. So I had the two girls and one boy, and the kids is worth fighting for. Yeah, good way, you know? Yeah, It gave you more fire, more energy, and more power. You know what I mean? Good boy. The only bad thing for me, Captain Tyson was coming out of prison, and he was gunning for me. Tyson wasn't going to always be off the scene. It was only going to be a question of time before he got out of prison. Wearing the white cap and black smock of a Muslim convert, he emerged at dawn amid a phalanx of bodyguards. Seldom has a convicted rapist left here in a stretch limousine. I don't know anybody that's been to prison that's come out and been the same. Titan was at the top of his game before he went inside. Would he be the same when he come out? There's been a lot of speculation about my plan, and here they are. I will fight again. May Allah bless you all. Thank you. While Tyson was in prison, the title changed hands a lot. It went from me to Lennox to Oliver McCall. But how long McCall could keep hold of it was up to Bruno. This was Frank's fourth attempt to become a world heavyweight champion. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's the defending world champion from the United States, Oliver McCall. Bruno knew this was probably his last shot that he was ever going to get at becoming heavyweight champion of the world. Three times he had been beaten. Time was running out. It was truly now or never. It's showtime! Here we go! Well, that's a tremendous right uppercut by Bruno. A very good left hook from Bruno, too. Oh, right hand. That's encouraging for Bruno. That rocked McCall back. Bruno deserves a world title, but if it was a popularity contest, he'd have won it years ago. But we're just entering this phase of the fight where you start to worry about whether Frank's petrol tank might run dry. One thing that Frank lacked, stamina. After the halfway mark of his championship fights, he used to run out of steam. Bruno was out on his feet. He was desperate. He had nothing left. But if he could just get through those last couple of minutes, he was going to be the heavyweight champion of the world. You never thought we'd see him become a world heavyweight champion, but he seems so close now. In the desperate last three minutes, hearts were in mouths. He dredged up the last remnants of his strength and hung in there. 
Is this Frank's moment of destiny? He boxed in an almost superhuman fashion. The foul's going to go any second. Bruno must be a mile ahead on point, and he must have been the world heavyweight champion with that final foul. All my life, I wanted to hear, and the new, that's what I was looking for. The winner... That's all I heard. It just brings tears to your eyes. If I won the 10 million pound lottery today, it wouldn't mean as much as this to me, you know? I'm just grateful. It hasn't really sunk in. You know, I mean, I've got this belt around me. It's like a dream come true. All the years I've been dreaming for this. I thank all the people staying behind me and, you know what I mean, You're persevering. Deserving and sticking with me back, and I thank my wife, I thank my mum, and it was tough in there, but I done it, you know, I done it, man, I love my people, I'm not an Uncle Tom, I'm not a sellout. He's finally got there, and he's mentally and physically exhausted, and in that moment of vulnerability, what does Frank Bruno talk about? He talks about his race. I'm not an Uncle Tom, man. No way. I love my brother. I'm not an Uncle Tom. It wasn't just about him fulfilling a professional goal. In many ways, Bruno was carrying the hopes and aspirations of Black Britain, and he's saying to them, I love my people. I'm not Uncle Tom. Believe that, please. Please, just believe that I'm not Uncle Tom. But well, thank I, you very much. I don't think everybody. anybody's seriously Cheers. saying you are. Well done, Frank. Cheers, thank you. Be home, Rachel. Love you, darling. Love it to the bone. Ladies and gentlemen, WBC heavyweight champion of the world, Mr. Frank Bruno. <laughs> It took Frank 13 years to become world heavyweight champion. 13 years to do what Mike Tyson had done in two years. This has been a hard, hard, long slug. A lot of sticks here and there, a lot of bruises here, verbal bruises, here, everything. But I'm glad that they're coming through, you know? This great, lovable giant who had failed so many times, and at last, through lovely mindedness, got there. Brilliant. He's a family man. No, I'm not really a big boxing fan, but when it's true, no. I don't know, just a hero, isn't it? It's a nice feeling being the great champion of the world. It's, it hasn't really sunk in as yet. And I know, it's, like it's, a dream come true. Blood, sweat, and tears, but that makes it all worth it. The man has uh, finally um, achieved his goal. So now it has all come true. It's like a dream, you know? Absolutely fantastic. That should have been thank you and good night for Frank Bruno. What does the future hold, Frank, do you think? I'd like to see Frank call it a day because he, he's he's reached the pinnacle of his career and I'd like to see him go a winner. The problem was Mike Tyson. Tyson's presence still loomed large in his mind. Tyson was always going to be like a thorn in, in Frank Bruno's side. Now, Bruno had what Tyson and his backers wanted. Obviously, as a mother, you must be naturally afraid of Frank um, going into the ring with Tyson. Well, no. The same God that brought him here will take him over. He knew, even in that moment, 
that Tyson would want that belt back. Uh, we're here today to announce Frank's title defence against Mike Tyson, which will take place on the 16th of March at the MGM Grand Hotel in Las Vegas. In the world's eyes, Mike Tyson is still up there. He's out of prison. He's a boxer. And to beat him, knock him out and wipe him off the, the map, you know what I mean? It goes down in history. It's all on the line going into the second fight. His health, his belt and his self-respect. You want me to kiss him, do you? Yeah. But if he could see off Mike Tyson, then truly there would be nothing else left to achieve. If he wants to take it away from me, he's got to rip my heart out, my ears off, my arms, everything, to come and take that away. And he won't do that, you know what I mean? Because this time I will stop him. I will knock him out. Going to wish the kids good night. Right? Where are you? Yeah. Hello. Hello. Yeah, right. What do you want to say to me? Goodbye, Daddy. I love you. Yeah? You're going to miss me. I'm going to miss you as well. I need to go, Daddy. Oh, no, race, 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 race. Seven years ago, Mike was the undisputed champion of the world. He took on Frank Bruno from England. He beat Frank Bruno in five rounds. And now, seven years later, as the world turns, Frank Bruno is the champion of the world. Mike is the challenger. And all the unanswered questions will be answered on Saturday night. I felt that Bruno just wanted to correct the Mike Tyson situation. You know, he just wanted another stab at it. The second time my dad fought Mike Tyson, I was nine. It was literally the first time I'd ever seen him box live. You can hardly hear yourself think here already because the British fans have been making a thunderous noise. Bruno's overcome two lots of eye surgery and has proved many people wrong. Glenn, still Bruno for you. I still think he can do it. We were sat outside Dad's dressing room. Tyson's team and him came out first. This guy looked like an absolute monster. We both were sitting there and we was petrified. He was scary to me. He just was an animal. For the first time in his life in the United States, Mike Tyson emerges to a chorus of boos. Frank Bruno has so much support here. As I watched Frank crossing himself on that walk to the ring, my immediate thought was, he looks like a man walking towards the gallows. You know, you can have all the support, you can have a whole country like Bruno did. But then, when you get in that ring, it's you. The referee and the other guy. That's lonely. Mr. Tyson! Mr. Bruno! Let's get it on! Tyson's cap have warned that he'll start explosively. Let's see. Tyson trying to let go with the right hand. And Bruno's going to have to be careful as he's caught with that right hand. I didn't like it watching him box. I was just hysterical, absolutely hysterical. What an opening round. Bruno was badly stuck and he is cut. Bad cut by the left eye. As a young girl, seeing your dad hurt like that, I just wanted to run in there and cuddle him and get him out of there. And also, I kind of wanted to hit Mike Tyson as well. I was angry. 
You're getting it's fucking been slower been and slower now. Listen to me, possible. Frank. This is all you fucking wanted. Throw the other cuss with some fucking venom and when you hit him, hit him. Now come on, you know you can win the fight. We'll fucking we'll win it, right? The hardest person to knock out is a guy that's got nothing to lose. Short left hook there. Tyson has not lost his punch. You just can't find the answer to the rushes that Tyson's throwing at him. Frank's dream to become the world heavyweight champion. He worked so hard to achieve it. And then within six months, it had been taken away from him again. With hindsight, I wish Frank Bruno would have retired. He could have gone out as the world champion. It wasn't about money. He was at the top of his game. And now he'd been ruined. I tried for England, I tried for my family, I tried for myself and I couldn't do no more than that. I'm sorry, that's the way the cookie crumbles. It's very, very cruel. But then again, it's a very, very cruel business. What will you do now, Frank? I mean, people will say, well, is that the end of the Bruno story or what? I've had a good time in my life and at the moment I want to sort of like, just sit down, I don't want to make no haste. Hate decisions and make a fool of myself. When I saw him again, Frank had in fact total retinal detachment. He had further surgery, which was able to reattach the retina. But because of the nature of the injury, the centre part of the vision has unfortunately been irreversibly damaged. I had to tell him firmly and finally that that was it. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for coming. Um, I'm just here to say that I'm re officially retired and any questions you want to ask. Tyson was the one that my dad lost to twice. He's always going to be his demon. He was the reason for his career ending. That must have been tough. Trainer George Francis goes, your hardest fight is going to be when you retire. I didn't know what the hell he was talking about. But blind me, when I retired, I definitely knew what it was all about. Because you put on weight and you get lazy, the aggression starts piling in, the mental health starts kicking in, and it's drama. A lot of fighters, when they retire from the sport, are left feeling very empty. It would have been like absolute hell on earth. 
when you've been doing something that's part of your existence is that. And it's taken away from you. You don't exist anymore. I know you still breathe, you know, and you still walk around. But in reality, for yourself, for what counts, for how you feel, you don't exist anymore. Boxing was dad and dad was boxing. That was him. That's what he'd lived for and that's all he knew. I could see things getting more strange with mum and dad and things not, they know they weren't getting on kind of thing. So I knew something wasn't right. I just didn't know what to do with himself. He just struggled sleeping, he struggled to settle down. I just remember the thinking, that's not my dad anymore. You never think it's going to be a point where you need to get doctors or anything involved because I just thought he was just having like a bad patch. And he goes on to drugs and drink and physically he went downhill and mentally he went downhill even quicker. He ended up with his eldest daughter insisting on getting him sectioned and he ended up in a mental hospital. Bipolar disorder could be linked to Bruno having to wrestle with these questions of who he is as a person you know, and what he represents. We cannot understand the pressures that he was under, what he had to go through, and him wrestling with these kind of different versions of Frank Bruno. can't tell the Frank Bruno story without the Mike Tyson story. I'm looking quite forward to it, you know? Yeah, we are, yeah. I haven't seen it for ages. I've got a lot to catch up with him. I hope he doesn't bite me ears off. <laughs> when did I first hear about Frank Bruno? Hey, that seems so, hey, doesn't that seem so long ago? Seems like a thousand light years away. And I was a totally different kind of person. I can't believe how many, I, I am who I am now. Who the hell is this guy? Bruno and Tyson weren't just significant boxers. They, they were cultural icons in, in their respective countries. I'm here for you, baby. I'm here for you. Baby. You got like you okay? Their yeah? paths crossed at certain yeah. moments in their lives. And at each and every moment, Tyson was there thwarting Bruno. He became the kind of the, this kind of spectre. I right? see it over here. Yeah. And I think in some ways it's been a bit sad at times to see Bruno so haunted by Mike Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Yeah, yeah. How you doing, brother? My very good, man. Went for a bit rocky here and there. No, but uh, on the great. right path, you know? Great. When you're in London and walking the street, what is it like? It's nice. It's yeah. nice vibes. You've still got a lot of people that love you and respect you, you know what I mean? They follow you and worship you, you know what I mean? Don't you think, like, wow, this is what I, I, I brought this to my life. You're Frank freaking Bruno, you know what I mean? <laughs> you're Mike Tyson. <laughs> I remember when he was in the count school when you was 15 and we sparred together and I met you from there, but watched you grow up. You met Cuss, you knew Cuss. You know? uh, that was when, so amazing. When Cuss is talking, he's like a, like a, um, a pastor, but as well as a no-nonsense man, you know what I mean? You were the European champion, I think, then. Yeah. And they had high hopes for you. Yeah, but you was the man who... Yeah. <laughs> the puncher was going to stop my high, high hopes, and you did, but no, but, no regrets, no. you know? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be so many things before the time we die. Till we die, we figure, this is who I am. We reach that place of, this is where I want to be when I leave. Life has been a learning lesson. Life has been re-educating myself. Getting rid of the hangers on us. Yeah, yeah those people leave when, they, when, this, when you have nothing left. But you don't have to get rid of them. You hit the rock bottom, they leave anyway. Whoa, heavy. Yeah. Heavy, man. Mike had a wife 
called Robin Gibbons. Remember that? Stuff yeah, I remember it like it was yesterday. <laughs> and the girl, oh, one minute Mike was crashing his car into a tree. She oh, had a, she, a got, she, got, she got me good. You know, the fight was phoned about five or maximum oh. six times, you know, but... I, used to, a, I was horrible in love. My love was just disaster. Yeah. It just wiped you out, man. It just wiped you out. It just, oh, man. I, was, I needed to be in the mental ward. I wasn't well. We just lived in life. Yeah, definitely. That's God, God made us to um, learn and to remember. Yeah. I do remember, unfortunately. Yeah. I think all the delays just stressed him out. They really messed with his head. Well, I was hoping it did. I don't know. I just went out there the first round. I tried to knock him out. I used to trying to catch him with a solid shot. And um, the shots I was hitting him with, he was taking them. And he came back a couple of shots, and he was fighting really good. And matter of fact, he staggered me, but hit me with a good shot in the first round. It was like electricity hit you. I saw the white lights. You don't know if you're really knocked out. You think you might be down. You don't know if you're down or not. You're boom. It's exploded. It's walked into a bomb. And he was, he was at his best at that time. That was a tough fight for me. When I fought him for the second time, I shouldn't have been there, but I had a family that I got to provide for. I, I, you don't mean to go and rob a bank. And I had to go in there with the disaster retina. One of the doctors, American doctors, then he stopped yeah. the fight, you know? And he's looking at me kind of strange, like my eye was flickering, but it's no excuse. That's boxing. If you bust I your agree. arm, you've got the other hand. If you ain't got that hand, you've got your head. You know, the doctor told him, you might lose the sight in your eye if you fight again. But he was determined to keep going. He was amazingly brave. That's what fighters do. That's why it's very few of us. He had more fire and more vigor in the first fight than he had in the second fight. Before I even got out of prison, um, the contract was already signed. Being champion again, that was the only thing in my mind. I wanted to know that I can do it again, even after I've been locked up. And then keep going away and all that stuff, you know. You've been through whatever you've been through, but I've been through it myself. But unfortunately, it's been slapped all over the papers, like saying cuckoo, madness, and whatever. And if you can handle it, I can handle it, you know what I mean? But listen, we're all crazy. Frank Bruno went into one mental health facility. I've been around 10 of them, okay? So these are what we have, this is what we have to go through sometimes. You know, I don't feel sorry for nobody because I know this is our journey that we have to deal with. We have to go through this journey. And I don't want no one to feel sorry for me as well. Can you imagine if we fought again? Yeah. Frank would probably win. <laughs> So I would never hit him. The Frank Bruno legacy moves on. <laughs> moves on. Yeah, definitely. Hey, listen, right? I got the title. I got the title, the baddest man in the world. I'm the scariest fighter that ever lived. And that's just that's really funny. I'm just one of those scary fighters. I come across as ferocious because it's my fear. It's like fire. You can, take, you can use it, you can command it, it can warm you up, but if you get afraid, you let it get out of control, it can kill you and everything around you. Mike, you look after yourself. You yeah? too, brother. You look nice good, man. Really Cheers, good man. Nice one. You too. Really you too. Respect, man. Awesome. <laughs> I don't think about much of anything, but I know this. I know me, Michael Tyson, Michael Gerard Tyson's brain, my mind, forget my brain, my mind is a torture chamber. And it's not my friend. So I have to control it in order to have any kind of stability in my life. And that's my biggest, and that's my biggest, um, my biggest problem to date, yeah. Staying in control. 
wouldn't know what it was like meeting the real Mike Tyson, away from all the entourage sitting down chilling. Everybody has their criticism, but I've got um, the greatest amount of respect for Mike. If I had my runnings, he had these runnings, you know what I mean? Good days and bad days, feeling down, can't motivate yourself. He's been in prison, crashing his car before he was supposed to fight me, and he's been through rocky roads, you know what I mean? I'm glad I met him today because it took a lot of pressure off me mentally. If you think I've been through a hard time, if you check him, Mike Tyson, what he's been through, and he's happy. I feel like a close brother to him, you know what I mean? After yourself, yeah? Thank you respect, so much. Boss. Thank respect, you. Thank you. respect, boss. Respect, boss. It's nice meeting you, boss. I'm going back to England a very, very trillion times a happy man. Frank not only got to the top of his tree and became the best in the world, but when Frank lost against Mike Tyson, he came back a hero. People loved him as much as if he had won. That is his legacy. It's kind of made me the person I am kind of thing and maybe want to push and strive and be successful in my life. I thank him for that, giving me that drive. I just know that they love him over there in England and he should take advantage of the love that the people have for him. Meeting Mike Tyson again just brought it all down to perspective. I thought I had problems. I'm happy the way things have gone. There have been good days, there have been bad days, but overall, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm a blessed boy from South London, so I've got to thank God. <laughs> As a kid, I didn't see how much he was putting on the line to give us the life that he wanted to give us. I'm very proud of him, very, very proud of him. Of everything he went through to give us the life that we got. The winner and new WBC heavyweight champion of the world Soon we'll come to the end of life's journey And perhaps we'll never meet anymore Till we gather in heaven's bright city Far away on that beautiful shore If we never meet again the sight of heaven as we struggle through this world and its strife, there's another meeting place somewhere in heaven by the side of the river of life, where the charming roses bloom forever, and where separation comes no more. If we never meet again the side of heaven, I will meet you on the beautiful shore. I will meet you on the beautiful shore.